All right, welcome back. So hopefully at this point, you're feeling a little more comfortable with view components, but I don't want you to get too comfortable. So in this episode, I'm gonna throw a wrench into the gears, or actually maybe this episode and the next episode, I'll throw a wrench into the gears. We're gonna perform a refactor that leaves you thinking, wait a minute, how do I communicate between these two components? And I'll show you what I mean. All right, let's get going. But real quick, let's take a look at the browser. And yeah, if you don't mind, why don't we take two or three minutes to freshen up the design just a little bit. And if you don't care, just fast forward. All right, I'm gonna visit my index.html file. And why don't we set a background color of maybe gray and then text white. We're gonna use a dark theme. Yeah. Okay, next up, we'll visit the assignment list. And maybe we'll add a border all around uh, each list like that. Okay, but white is a little too harsh. Why don't we do a slightly lighter shade of the background color? Yeah, okay. Um, maybe there's a little too much padding. So let's go into the a single assignment and on the label, we'll set padding to all around. Okay, next I'd like borders between each of the assignments. So I could set a border bottom here, but sometimes you end up with double borders. Uh, so instead, on my assignment list, I can actually use, because I'm using Tailwind, I can use this divide Y class, and this will automatically figure out how to add dividers between each of the items. It's pretty useful. But once again, let's make sure that it's the exact same color. So we want gray 600. Yeah. Okay, next, the misalignment of the checkboxes is really weird. So why don't we go to a single assignment and we'll say, uh, set a display of flex and then do justify between. And that'll push this to the left and this to the right. Come back and refresh. Ooh, yeah, it's not quite right. Um, well, let's first do align items to the center. And that will vertically align these two elements. Um, next, you'll see they're right up against each other and I don't want that. So on the input, let's add maybe margin left of about two. Yeah, maybe even a little more. Yeah, I think that's fine enough. And remember, because we built these as components, these design decisions will be reflected for every single assignment list we create. All right, and I think that's good enough for now. Okay, so now let's move on to adding a box down here to add a new assignment. Of course, that's an essential feature. Okay, so we'll go into our assignments component. And to start, why don't we put it right down here? I'll add a form that consists of an input that'll have a placeholder of new assignment. Okay, let's have a look at that. Come back, give it a refresh, and yeah. Um, but if I type into it, notice the text is white and we don't quite want that. So let's revert it back to text black and that'll fix that issue. Okay, next I want a little button to the right. So we'll add that here. Give me a button with a type of submit and we'll say add. Okay, refresh, have a look at that. All right, um, maybe we should add a border around this group here. So I'll do the same thing. Um, let's do this. Let's wrap this within a div. And then here I can set a border like so. Yeah, but now once again, I'd like a little space between them. And then maybe I should set the background color of the button. So let's do this, background color of white, text black, but now we've doubled up on text black. So let's just set it on the div instead. Come back, yeah. Um, I'd like a little divider between them and then we need the padding. So let's do padding two on the label and the button, and then I'll add uh, maybe a border left to the button. All right, come back, refresh. There we go, I think that's fine. Okay, so now think about it. When the user types in here and when they press the submit button, we should then catch that and add the new assignment to the list. Okay, here's how we do that. The first step is I'm gonna listen for a submit event. Now, a handful of episodes ago, you learned about using V on, and I think we used the click event as an example. Uh, and that works, and also don't forget the alias of at symbol. Uh, this listens for a click event on the form. In our case though, I actually wanna listen for when the form is submitted. So why don't we say when it's submitted, call a method named add, 
and we'll do that here. Methods add, and for now, let's just alert, hi there, to make sure it's working. Okay, come back, refresh, submit the form, and yes, I get an alert here, but I want you to pay attention right up here. When I click on it, ah, did you see that? The page refreshed, and of course it did. We submitted the form. Okay, so often though, you want to prevent that default action. So typically what we do is you call e.preventDefault when the form is submitted, right? And that prevents the default action, which is to submit. So now if I do it, I get my alert, but again, notice you're not gonna see the page refresh. Okay, but now because this is such a common thing, uh, View makes this a little easier. It has modifiers that we can add to our event listeners like this, submit.prevent. So listen for when the form is submitted, but prevent the default action in the process. And now uh, that'll take care of it. Okay, so what should we do here? Well, when you submit it, we get our alert, and it sounds like I need to grab what the user typed into this input. So again, back in the day, you would have done some kind of like document.query selector, track down the input, grab its value, and then do something with it. This is kind of the old school, dive into the DOM and do something with it approach. But with Vue, we have a single source of truth. So with that in mind, we're gonna leverage V model. We'll call this new assignment, and this will be our source of truth. Okay, let's bind it. V model is new assignment. And now when we submit the form, let's just alert this new assignment and see what we get. Okay, so we come back, refresh, read chapter five, submit, and there we go. We are tracking it. And of course, don't forget, you can open up View Dev Tools to see exactly what we have here. All right, very cool. So now if you think about it, what we should probably do is append a new item to this assignments array. So we'll say this.assignments.push, where the name is this.newAssignment. Of course, it's not completed. And then we need to set the ID. And I think a simple enough approach is to grab the length of items here and increase it by one. So I could say this.assignments.length plus one, and that should do it. Okay, so now think about what happens. When the user types in here, let's refresh. When they submit it, we will call this method. This method will push a new item to this array. Uh, because this data is reactive, Vue will pick up on that, and as a result, re-render uh, the assignment list to match. Okay, so we give it a shot, and it works. How cool is that? Uh, and of course, I can complete it just like any other assignment. Okay, but now notice when we added one here, it didn't get cleared for next time. So every time I do this, I would then have to delete and start over. Okay, we can fix that really easily. What if we just update this value to be an empty string like this? This dot new assignment is back to an empty string. And when we change it, it reevaluates because it's reactive. Read chapter five, we add it to the list and then we clear the input for next time. Okay, cool, so this is looking pretty good, and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Jeffrey, where's, where's the wrench? You said we were gonna run into some issues here, and I haven't seen one. The wrench is when we begin refactoring this into its own component, and I'm gonna show you that in the very next episode.